G'day guys, I thought I'd just do a review of my F700GS for today. So here she is, I'll just give you a quick look. So I'll hop on her and take her for a ride and explain why I got it and what she's like to ride. So one of the main reasons I got this bike over the competition, say the V-Strom 650, the Kawasaki Versailles, um, you know, those kind of faux adventure bikes, was this little button down here, the ABS, and the traction control, both of which you can turn off if you need to. Which is very helpful if you're doing dirt roads or whatever because I just don't feel confident in the gravel with the ABS on it makes it hard to brake so you just turn it off when you start it up or when you're stationary just down here and the traction control well that's always helpful especially when it's wet I'll just pull up over here. Oh no, there's people over there. They want to look like a fool. I'll pull over in a bit and go through the mods that I've made. So this is an 800cc parallel twin. It's the same engine as the F800GS. Uh, slightly less horsepower but a tiny bit more torque. So other differences are the suspension. The travel isn't as long as the F800 and it has cast wheels is probably the biggest defining factor so I find the cast wheels are far better on the road just uh, it's not as vague and in the corners you can really hustle on this thing whereas an F800 because of the big 21 inch front it's just not quite as confidence inspiring in the twisties but the F800 is far better off-road. This isn't too bad, although um, the tyres on it, the Continental Trailer Techs, boy, they're shite and gravel. We have uh, like a pea gravel, it's just like riding on ball bearings all the time. And if you don't have, you know, at least some decent tread, you're in for a fun ride. And I found out the hard way. <coughs> Right, so that's a look at her. I got these SW Motec crash bars. I needed them straight away because I barely had the bike a week and I already dropped the poor thing. Uh, I got a bash plate as well, an Aussie Mob BMB. They make great stuff. Uh, hand guards were factory accessories. Uh, Rotor Packs top pack. It's just got all my tools, little mini air compressor, etc. Oh, and the radiator guard down here as well. Yeah, so I'll get back to riding. <laughs> so the bike comes factory with heated grips as well. I didn't really think I'd need them, but they've actually been quite handy in winter has two settings the first settings lukewarm the uh, second setting is just incinerate so I only really use the first setting because the second one obviously is too hot please stop mr. Ford Ranger so reasons why I got the bike I used to ride super sport so that's where my perspective comes from and then I had a fairly nasty accident which kind of changed my whole perspective and injuries I sustained required that I ride a bike that's upright 
with not too much um, pressure on my upper body. So it forced me to look at a different kind of bike and it was fairly, um, I guess you could say a little bit traumatic. So I wanted a bike that was really easy to get along with, super conf confidence inspiring and just a lot of fun at the same time. And this F700 really does all that. It's just super easy to ride. You don't even have to think about it really. You don't have to really push it to have a fun. And the engine characteristics are really great. I mean, you've got only 75 horsepower, but that's plenty enough to hustle along. And the torque is right where you want it. So it's nice and down low, so you're in traffic, you just twist the throttle, whatever gear you're in, and boom, you're moving. So that's really nice. Now when I bought it, it was the end of financial year kind of clearance sale, so they threw in ESA and um, the comfort seat and tire pressure sensors, so I'll go through them. Firstly, the seat, it's been brilliant, very comfortable. I've done 500 kilometer plus days and got off and I don't feel like I've been raped by Optimus Prime at the end of it, it's actually not too bad, so it's a testament to the seat. Or maybe I just have a butt that doesn't feel pain too much, but this seat's definitely the best I've had on any motorcycle. And this is about my seventh or eighth motorcycle I've owned. Um, tire pressure sensors, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I haven't really had to use them yet. Uh, it's a bit of a, I don't know, I think it's a little silly, but I'm sure it'll come in handy if I get a puncture and I somehow don't notice it will flash up on this little screen here, warning you that your pressure's dropping rapidly. So I guess that can be handy. The ESA, this guy's gonna think I'm crazy. The ESA is um, electronic suspension adjustment and it's really good. Um, really helps when you've got pillions unexpectedly really so you don't have time to pop open the seat and adjust the uh, preload with a little key you can just jack up the, the shock absorber instead just for those unexpected pillions or if you're traveling along and you're in comfort like I am now so it just soaks up all the bumps really nicely and then you hit some twisties you can just this button here down here and you can just hit it and it'll go through uh, comfort, normal, and sport. So just stiffen it up gradually. So it's, it's actually a pretty nice feature. And I will say, I think it's needed if you're gonna do two up touring with a whole load of luggage like I have. So you got like 50 plus liters of luggage and I've got my wife on the back. Um, we really needed the shock absorber on sport and the preload adjusted completely out for the ride to be, you know, comfortable. Because the uh, stock spring on this isn't the stiffest. Minor complaints I have with the bike. Um, I'd say the biggest one is the clutch contact point on the lever. I've never encountered it on a motorcycle before and I've ridden plenty and that's at the uh, where the clutch engages on the release of the lever down here it's really far out so it's almost at the full extension of my hand before the clutch engages so it's quite strange and I'm used to it engaging at about the midpoint, so you know, taking off briskly has always been quite easy, but on this it's a, it's a bit frustrating. And yes, I do have the lever adjusted in as far as possible. You can adjust the stock levers on the BMW, but uh, the adjustment isn't um, that significant, not like aftermarket, like Pazo levers or FPs or whatever. So I'll have to get some of them in the future. 
Um, another major complaint, not of mine, but uh, of others online, is the uh, little tiny dicky screen on here. It's a lot shorter than the F800, and a lot of comp people complain that um, it's not enough wind protection. I haven't uh, experienced that, to tell you the truth. I don't know what they're complaining about. But I'm one of those strange people that prefers clean air, so, you know, non-buffeting air just coming and hitting my head and my upper body keeps me upright, and it means it's less stress on my upper body. And this little screen just means the dirty air only just hits me below the chest, so I'm getting clean air from the chest up, which is what I prefer on a bike, actually. Because I find with taller screens that dirty buffeting air a good little posty bike gave me the nod nice fella yeah so I find the taller screens I get the dirty air smack bang in the face and that's really frustrating so I prefer the smaller screen actually um, for reference point I'm 180 centimeters tall so that might give you an idea of where I sit on the bike that's another thing the seat height is really low um, you hear it talked a lot about, and some people make little snarky comment here and there, it's a bike designed for lady riders. And with the seat height and mind, yeah, you're probably right, it does suit uh, the shorter rider and lady riders. But I'm almost six foot and I don't have any problems. And those that do make fun of the bike saying, oh, you know, it's a girl's bike because of the seat height and it's a detuned F800, blah, blah, blah. It's... A bit sexist if you ask me. Just because a bike has attributes to suit uh, women doesn't mean that those attributes immediately make it a negative for a motorcycle. So I don't know what their argument is there. I suspect they've probably just got a small penis. Uh, bar height is really comfortable on the road. It's right where you want it. Um, but off-road, if you're standing up, say, like I am now, I don't know if you can see, but I'm kind of just hanging on to the bars with the ends of my fingers. So I'd have to uh, crouch over a little too much if I'm off-road. So if you're, say, 5 foot 11 or higher, you might need to look into some bar risers. The bike comes... Uh, stock with a little 12 volt charger, Euro one, I don't know if you can see that. I'll pull over in a second and give you a look. Should have pulled over there actually. Oh well. Yeah, I'll pull over here and give you a look. There was a burnt out car here a couple of weeks ago, obviously gotten rid of it already. So the 12 volts just here, but it is the Euro one, so you have to get an adapter for all the Aussie 12 volt stuff. But Powerlet, I think the brand is, they make the adapters, so it's not too much trouble. No car's going to flatten me. I'll give you a better look. So overall, really easy bike to get along with. Obviously, you can see it doesn't have quite such an aggressive stance as the F800 on the road, but it still looks pretty nice, especially in this kind of uh, matte, silvery colour. I really enjoyed the bike. Oh, before I go, I should comment on the brakes. Um, so this was the update from the F650 GS, I think, same engine and everything, but the main difference was the F700 now comes with uh, twin discs and twin four caliper. Uh, yeah, four piston calipers. And while the brakes are good, I think they got a little complacent with the ABS because you can just anchor down on it without too much trouble and it'll brake straight away. But I have noticed if you turn the ABS off, they're not as impressive as you would expect four pot Brembos to be. They're not super sport good. I mean, they're certainly adequ adequate. Um, they're nowhere near um, as bad as, say, like dual sport brakes but they're not as good as you would expect and I guess that brings me on to the final comment before I head off and that's basically that I got this over the F800 as well because I have a second bike and that's the uh, WR250R so 
So I plan on using that for the um, more difficult and technical off-road stuff. So I really didn't need a, you know, a dual wonder bike like the F800 or, I don't know, what, the uh, XT660Z Yamaha or even, say, a KLR650 or a DR650. I wanted a two-bike system, so I wanted something slightly um, tailored towards the road but was able to do a little bit of dirt because here in Australia, if you're looking at doing touring outside of the city, um, the dirt roads are going to be in the near future regardless of you know your best hopes and dreams of trying not to just because the country is so big so yeah that's why I got the F800 and yeah I'm loving it it's absolutely fantastic I would definitely recommend it over the competition it's just got the switchable ABS um, resale value is probably another benefit and I think it looks far more purposeful than the competition maybe the latest iteration of the V-Strom doesn't look too bad yeah anyway I'll stop gas bagging because I'll just talk on and on and on about motorcycles until all your ears start bleeding so I'll check out thanks for coming and watching this is Chronicles of Solid Out see you later